Well, good morning to you again on this great feast of the baptism of the Lord. And as some of you may know, um, over the New Year's period, I was back in Ireland for a few days. Now, yes, part of that was holiday, but the main reason I went back, in fact, was to do a baptism, to baptize my cousin, his youngest boy, my cousin's youngest boy. I went back to do that baptism. And now I can happily report it all went well. The baptism went off without a hitch. The family came together from as far afield as Australia. And, well, the child was dunked, if you will. The child was baptized, brought into the family. <clears throat> but, as those of you who know me know that I may have a slight sense of humor, and so I couldn't resist. The night before the baptism, I, um, well, I sent the child's mother one of these videos. I don't know if you've seen them doing the rounds of an Eastern Orthodox priest baptizing a small child. And I said, would it be okay if I do it like that? Now, if you haven't seen it, he's got an enormous bucket of water almost, and he dunks the child in it very enthusiastically several times. Now, the child was fine in that video too, but I sent this. I couldn't resist because this guy wasn't holding anything back, and I wanted to see what the child's mother would say to me. Um, well, uh, I won't tell you what the conversation was, but needless to say, I baptized the child in the traditional Catholic Latin right way, um, and all went well, like I say. But that got me to thinking, and don't worry, not to thinking to change our baptismal rites here, nothing like that, but it got me to thinking about the shock value of baptism. Because when we think about it, baptism is quite shocking in what it does. It's wonderful in what it does, but there's something shocking about what it is and what it stands for. But why is that? What is shocking about it? What does it do for each and every one of us? Well, if we were baptized as small children or as adults, or if we're yet to be baptized, the waters of baptism do something very special. By the waters of baptism, the catechism of the church tells us we are healed of original sin. By the waters of baptism, we are united, brought in in a very special way into Christ's body, the church. And by the waters of baptism, we become God's adopted children. We become children in Jesus Christ. That's what baptism stands for. We become his adopted children. Fascinating, amazing, shocking. And so, baptism changes us. And for the better, I might add, baptism, if you will, plants the seed of God's grace in our hearts. And we're called to nurture that by prayer and by the sacraments like the Mass we have today. Baptism, as we heard in the Gospel, opens the doors of heaven. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus. And that happens for us too in our baptism. And it leaves a mark on our souls, the mark of the loving and tender God that we heard about in that second reading. And no action, no sin, no matter what it is, nothing can remove that mark of God's love from us. Nothing can destroy it. Shocking indeed. In fact, I don't know about you, but I find it all rather amazing, really, when you think about what a few splashes of water and the right words can do. Far more shocking than, well, the shenanigans of an overly enthusiastic Eastern priest, to my mind at least. But if that's what baptism does for each and every one of us, forgives sins, brings us into the church, and makes us God's adopted children by grace, well, then it's even more shocking, I think, that Jesus was baptized, that we celebrate this feast of the baptism at all. Because did any of those effects of baptism happen to Christ? And the answer is no, they didn't. He didn't suffer from sin. He was the original sinless one from all eternity, so he couldn't be healed from it. He hadn't yet founded the church on Peter when he was baptized, so he couldn't be made a member of it, and he was already Christ. 
And he was already the child of God, the only begotten child of God from all eternity, so he couldn't be adopted. Why was he baptized? That's the shocking element of it all, that he was baptized in the first place. And if you've ever seen or read St. Matthew's version of this gospel, John the Baptist has this same idea too. When Jesus comes to be baptized, John basically says to him, oh, hang on there a second, Jesus. Um, uh, you, you don't need to be baptized. You, you, you've got it going on already. In fact, would you mind baptizing me? So why? Why was he baptized? What's going on? Well, Jesus came to be baptized, not for his sake, but for ours. Jesus came to be baptized in a baptism of forgiveness, not for his sake, but for ours. When he became human like all of us, when he took on all of that, when he went into the waters of the Jordan, he made the water holy. He made the water capable, able to baptize us. And so in doing that, he provided the means of baptism for each and every one of us, the means to be cleansed of sin, the way to become part of his body, the church, the way to become his adopted children. That's what the baptism of Jesus that we celebrate today on this last day of Christmas does for us. It makes true baptism possible. Yes, by his baptism, the heavens were opened and the open heavens, that close relationship with God is what he offers us. That leaving open the possibility of being in union with God, of leaving open the possibility of becoming part of his body, the church, of leaving open the possibility of becoming his children by grace. That's what the baptism of Jesus did for us. All through his baptism, we were able to be baptized made all that possible, all those graces, all of that for each and every one of us. Shocking, really. Amazing, really. Fantastic, really, if we stop and think about it for a moment. And a wonderful feast to end our Christmas cycle on. So we celebrated the birth of God's only Son on Christmas Day. On the, on the Epiphany, we celebrated the nations coming to God. And today, on this last day of Christmas, we celebrate those who are baptized, becoming God's children, receiving the fullness of that grace. Fantastic, really. And so that got me to thinking too, if I'm ever given the um, opportunity to baptize another one of my cousin's uh, children, maybe, maybe the next time I won't send them a video to try and shock them. Maybe I'll tell them what baptism actually does. Maybe I'll invite them to consider, as we have considered today, what baptism does for each and every one of us because in the last analysis, when we think about it, that's far more shocking, far more fantastic, far more amazing than any video that I can show to uh, annoy my relatives. <laughs>